Hello, this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy III. Last time, I got the new job classes and decided to put them to use. Uh, I think my magic, sl sl my class selection is pretty obvious here, uh, except for the Black Mage, which I'll go over in just a moment. Uh, there are some unique differences to the job class system in this Final Fantasy, so I figured I'd, this would be a good time for me to go over them with you. Now, unlike other games with job class systems, you can't simply switch from one job class to another at will. You have to use your spiritual capacity, which you accumulate after each battle. Uh, you can see that at the bottom of the screen there, 4C, that's 4 capacity that I have left now after switching off to my new job classes. Uh, for the most part, it requires less capacity to switch to a similar class line, like from one magic user to another or ma one melee class to another. Like, for example, if I tried to switch from, from a fighter to the black wizard, it uses up more capacity than switching, say, to a monk. Um, I mean, this is this is a general rule. It's not always the case, but usually that's the way it works. The idea is that this prevents you from switching to a class uh, with higher vitality, for example, uh, just before gaining a level. Uh, the thing is, is that your HP is fixed regardless of your job class. So, if you quickly sw switch, let's say from a black mage with four vitality to a monk with nine vitality. Uh, you can capitalize on the HP gain, which will happen upon gaining a level. But you have to use a lot of capacity to do that, and not to mention, I mean, you would, um... You'd lose all your spell charges, too. So, um, you don't want to do that in the middle of an area, for example. I mean, besides, I really don't recommend it. I mean, it's not really necessary. I mean, by the end of the game, even by using magic classes for the most part, they'll only be like a... 500 HP off of them at the most by the end of the game, so, I mean, you'll be fine. It's not a problem. Uh, another unique component to the job class system is your skill level. Uh, you can see that in the upper right corner there. It's unique to each job for each character. And the most obvious use for skill is that it allows you to switch back to that job class with less capacity. It also slightly increases your attack damage and your hit percentage, but that's not the half of it. Most importantly, with enough skill, you can increase your magic attack multipliers. This would be like the equivalent of gaining a spell level in Final Fantasy II, except your spells don't cost more. Now for white and black ma magic, you need 32 skill levels over one in order to gain another magic attack multiplier. Uh, you can find more details about this in the damage formula fact on game facts, but like for example, at the beginning of the game here, we start out with well, one magic attack multiplier. But if I got my skill level up to 33, that would um, effectively double the effect of my magic, either doubling its damage or doubling its hit percentage or whatever. So it'd be like casting the spell twice in a single round. Now, like it, it works just like attacking. It calculates each hit separately, but with magic, at least, it doesn't display each hit. It just does it. So whereas your physical attacks actually show it. So not quite as obvious, but it's very potent. And this is partially why I'm using the Black Mage so early in the game instead of the Red Mage. I mean, obviously the Red Mage is better than the Black Mage for this part of the game. However, I want to get up to a skill level of 33 as quickly as possible. Specifically, I want to achieve that goal by the time I get to the next crystal. And uh, there's a really hard boss fight there, which can be made much easier with the appropriate skill level. And I'll barely reach a skill level of 33 by the time I get there. So... Now you might be asking, how do you gain skill? Well, it depends on what actions you take during battle for each class. Now, um, there, it's not displayed, but there's an internal counter up to 100 that works just like your experience level. When you accumulate 100 skill points, you gain another skill level. The idea is that if you're using your class's main command, you'll gain more skill points. For example, uh, your mages should cast spells every round if they want to gain skill levels more quickly. Uh, fortunately, unlike Final Fantasy 1, this game actually gives us enough spell charges to, uh, or MP, they call it in this game, to uh, actually make them very useful. Uh, you can find out how much each command contributes to your skill points in the damage formula fact as well. Now, also since last time, I made some quick purchases at the village of Ur to the south. Um, I mean, I'll be heading there shortly thereafter, but I want to go to this cave first. Most notably, I purchased the Pure Spell for Refia. You just uh, double-click on it there, 
give it to whoever you want to use it, and it'll be added to their spell list. You can also remove it with the item command there, or you can switch your spells with another warrior's. It's very flexible there, so I really like that. And um, I got it for Refia, not so much because I need it right now, but I want him to start working on his skill levels right away. Uh, much like Final Fantasy II, I'll be pointlessly casting the spell just to gain the skill levels because it's so important later on in the game. Now for my equipment, I purchased uh, a leather robe for both of my melee fighters here, both uh, my fighter and my monk there. Um, I'll find more of those for my mages soon enough. And also I purchased a copper ring for Ingus there, since he'll be in the front row temporarily. And, uh, oh, yeah, I wanted to show you, um, note that every class can effectively dual wield in this game. Now, at least in this version of the game, that totally pays off. I mean, I'm not worried about defense at all, so. Speaking of stats, uh, they re did a really nice job of fixing a lot of the bugs from Final Fantasy 1. Uh, most importantly, they fixed the intelligence bug so that, um, well, it's called intellect in this game, but it actually works now. For every 16 intellect or spirit, uh, for your white magic that is, you'll gain another magic attack multiplier. And for every 16 agility, you'll gain another physical attack multiplier per hand. And if you know which levels each class will gain or break through to like 16 intellect or 16 agility, this can make it a lot easier to figure out when level grinding a little more would help, or if you want to wait till later because it's not going to happen anytime soon. Now, this information can be found in the job evaluation pack on game facts there. Um, I'll do my best to spread it out for you so that you're not spending more than 30 minutes at a time level grinding. Not that you need to, but for such a small investment, I think the benefits are well worth it. So, okay, we got everything here, so let's t take a look at the altar cave. There's some uh, chests that we couldn't have gotten before during our first trip, so let's go. We don't want to head down there yet. There's a hidden passage here. And we get 2,000 gil. Yay! Now we want to head down here and get some more treasure. Got a copper ring. We want to give that to Refia. Unfortunately, at my... Ah, uh, oh, crap. Unfortunately, my uh, Malay warriors won't have uh, arm gear for quite a while. So... Okay, and this chest contains a long sword, which only the fighter can equip for now, so let's give that to him. It's a little helpful for his attack power there. And this chest contains the sleep spell. This is particularly important for the black mage, so that he can start working on uh, developing his skill levels a lot more too. And now I can put him in the back row, and I'm not even going to bother attacking with him anymore, so... Now I'm just going to have him cast Sleep every round, have uh, Refia cast Pure every round for a little while, as long as we're in this cave. That'll really help with building up those skill levels. And we get another Longsword, which I will give to the fighter here. And a Nunchuck, which I will hold on to for the Monk for now, but I don't want to give it to him quite yet. Not until I get another Nunchuck for him, because... As you can see, that'll lower his attack power with just the one. So, I'm going to wait until later for that. And, um, you know what, I'm just going to stop here for now. Um, I'll visit the village of Ur in the next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy III. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.